Welcome to Men Talk 911. Good to see you, man. Good to see you, too. Let's go. Well, Tone, it's good to be here with you. Uh, finally getting to conceptualize this idea into reality. Long you know? time coming, man. Right, Long right. Long time coming. Yeah, so definitely for a world that is out there going through the modern day dating, I felt that uh, definitely this is something that is needed, right? Uh, men have so, for so long, I felt, haven't been really loved conditionally. And uh, getting a chance to share with you and sit down and just kind of creating this platform for men who are married or not married, um, looking to be married or single, you know, uh, I think they need to have a pathway to getting to this modern dating world. And uh, one thing is for us being able to hold women accountable a little bit more based off of the dating pool we have currently and the rules and the expectations that have all changed. How do you feel about that? You know, when we talked about it, I really like the fact that how you share with me, this is a platform where we want to give other men opportunity to, to develop their voice. I think so often men get stifled in what they truly believe or what they truly feel in relationships, in marriages, and we kind of take a back seat to please. So I think this is a great opportunity to kind of start that dialogue and seeing what we can do better. Really? I'm with you 100%. Um, if, if I was to ask you a question, you know, you being a married man, being in here and we're gonna come and talk. Has there been days or times, and you tell me, because I've been yeah. married for 14 years, right. been divorced, right, right. been in a relationship, but you're married currently, right. right? Okay, so has there been times where you've come home and not felt your best, but have been required to be your best when you came home, do you feel? Absolutely, so let me start off with this. I'm married, I've been married for eight years, right? Uh, wife of five kids, right? So often I come home and from a long days of work and it's, it's really not no pause button in my household. It's dad's home and now you back at work, right? And you got the bucket list, the 10 different items you got to take care of. And so often it seems like my spouse forgets about a break, right? <laughs> or not even a break, maybe even like a hug, uh, ah, oh, what a great day. I'm glad you're back. Study, hey, I need you to do this, 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 and this. So that's kind of how I be moving. Oh, I'll tell you, and I felt that same way, just, right. just to be honest with you. I think a lot of men may feel that way. I mean, the real world out there is, is very unrelenting on us, right? You know, you go out there, you're expected to provide. We do jobs that are really dangerous. Right, that right, right. Really right. keep the infrastructure in the world ticking but <clears throat> when you come home it's far too often they they forget about what you're going through out there and expect you to get there and then start again right, right. so there's never really it, it, it's almost work. as if the time didn't even count like you you at work and to them that time you spend at work is absent it didn't count you starting fresh so as soon as you get home is as is as if you was out with your homeboys playing video games, hanging out, playing ball. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you've been out having fun. I've been in the house with the kids. Now it's time for you to get take over. Yeah. Wow. I mean, isn't hasn't relationship they just really have changed. You know, I see a lot of stuff online, red pill, blue pill. Right, right, <laughs> you know, right, right. I didn't know what that was really in the <laughs> beginning. Uh, I thought red was well, no. Nah. <laughs> but I tell you this though, my main point was in marriage then, would you say that there's far too many men that are coming home with so many stressors and feelings? Is it safe at home to come home and tell your wife, like, I know you want me to go in and get into helping the kids, but wow, what a day have I had. I had a dude turn on me at work or I had a pipe bust, uh, uh, anything that can happen. Do you find that it's safe to be vulnerable at home, you think? So the way I see it, it, it's like a second job. Um, you know, you have your job and you, you, you put up this 
facade or this way of being where you're not naturally your natural self, but you're appeasing to your bosses, your coworkers and all these things. And you go home and it's that same type of facade. You can't really be your vulnerable self and say, hey, man, I had a tough one today. I just need you to rub my back and sit down and talk to me. Mm. You know, and there's those the moments where I have experienced. I mean, life is life and things get tough, right? And sometimes I need to sit down to my wife and let her know like, hey man, I had a tough day, you know? Uh, this going on, this is how I feel about this, boss a little bit mad, I'm stressing. And to, to hear a response of, of, hey man, that's nothing. I've been here with my kids and all this stuff. <laughs> and it's, there's no empathy, there's no um, validation. It's just, hey, you gotta be tough type of feel like those feelings don't matter you're a man hide those stuff those and keep going and i think that's dangerous yeah well i'm glad you even said that because that's really what i wanted to get to next was like why do you i mean we're talking to the world we're speaking to people out there who are struggling and going through this relationship world in a different way. You have people who are traditionalists who we went through with our grandparents and now a whole right. nother wave and generation right, of right. kids. So oh, um, maybe maybe answering this question to the world, what should they expect out of Men Talk? You know, I know if I could answer to you, I would say my main thought process was creating a community of men that can find a place to be able to come in, be vulnerable, sit down, and really talk about what they're truly feeling, right? right? right. It's far too often I think you're married and you're coming home and you're placating to the mood to make them feel happy and comfortable where you're going through struggling feelings, thoughts, right. things right. at right. work, and so we hide it and stuff right. it inside. I mean, I've never really been vulnerable that yeah. way. Right, right. <laughs> and uh, it's something that I had to learn not to do. And I felt creating and going through this journey, men talk can be that place for men, no matter where you are. A-list celebrity down to the janitor can come in here and sit down and get a chance to communicate what they're feeling, how they're experiencing it. I mean, have you been in relationships, bro? And you like, well, you're married, but before you were married, you were with a girl. Right. right. And you doing everything you can. You're right. taking her out. You're working your job. You're doing what you can. But she just never was happy. Right. It, right. Nothing you can do was good enough. And uh -huh. when she left you, you would hear from the other friends. Oh, right. she said you were controlling. You were narcissistic. Right. You were right. this. You were that. And in those things, all, all they really had was the ability to flip it to be them being the victim. Right. 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 And right. far too often. Men don't get the opportunity to go in and share their version. Mm -hmm. Men talk, speak on it, come in here and get a chance to talk about what our daily traumas and issues are, what we really want, mm -hmm. right? Far too often, everything is about what the woman needs, mm -hmm. what the woman wants, what she's going to expect. Well, I'm hoping we can grow a community where we can speak on how we're feeling, what we're experiencing, and then we can come together and come up with a plan on what we're going to do to move forward in this current modern dating world. That's what I would hope men talk would be. Right. What about you? Right. You know, just to add on to what you say, said, <clears throat> one of the things that I think is a huge need, right? We have so many men that don't have that avenue to go to. And I, I'll just be honest with all you guys. I'll try to be a little vulnerable. <clears throat> As I, I went through my marriage, like I said, eight years of marriage, um, I would say a good six years of this was a lot of placating, a lot of uh, kind of just trying to make my wife happy. And that, that consists of if she says she needs this, I'm going to get it. If I need to be this way, I'm going to be that way. Everything to make her happy, thinking that uh, that's the way I would achieve peace in my household. And it came to the end of it where I realized I didn't really receive peace. What I received was I lost myself. So I'm hoping uh, Men Talk can be a platform where men can come together, develop their voice, share with one another, develop a safety network where like-minded men going to similar situations or totally different situations, you can hear another's perspective. Sometimes, so often we think I'm the only one going through something. 
oh man, it's tough. This other guy, dang. He's like, you don't understand, JT. You don't understand what I go through at home because you're not married, right? But it's so many things that we can pull from each other and relate to. So many ideas that you have and those that will be a part of this have that can help another man out just to weather the storm and get to the other side and develop their voice, develop who they are, develop the, that key mentality that's hidden within them, trapped inside, reaching that potential that each man has. It's a God-given thing that we all have and it's hidden because a lot of times relationships suffocate them and these things can't get out. So that's, that's what I'm hoping this uh, will turn to and I think that's our, one of our goals to create in this safe place for men to come to reach out and kind of be a little vulnerable with us and um, share their story and we can take it from there. Well, I'm hoping as you guys all watch this, you follow and subscribe and go along this journey with us. Allow us to be there for you. There's such a ton of resources. I think we have the nine men talk 911.com up where you're able to go on to there and see some of the resources we have, upcoming things that are uh, that we're looking to work on. And if you're struggling uh, mentally with you know, we know and are very aware of the men that are taking their lives because they're lonely and, and are not being able to be heard. Um, you're having sexless marriages. You're having um, infidelity of the woman and women who are unhappy. And quite honest, I think that goes into my next point. Yeah. What, what are we doing with the women on this? I know when these things go online, we cut it up and we put clips out there. But is there a message to the women in regards to what they could expect if they were to tune in? Could I answer that? Yeah, and definitely, definitely answer that. So what I am hoping through Men Talk is that women will get a chance to finally not take everything personal okay. and give men a space where they can be safe to talk about what they're experiencing without women hijacking it and making it about how you said it when you said it and how it made them feel when you're expressing your feelings. I think women need to understand that, that we're really in a world where your guys' expectations are so high that it is very hard for the men on the bottom or in the middle to be able to even get your attention. And it's so lonely in those areas. And I'm hoping that you women can be willing to listen to what these men are going through and what they're experiencing. And through that, maybe take a look at yourself as to how you're experiencing or dealing with men, how you're communicating with them. And you know what? Men are just like women. We're just different, right? In different ways. And so I'm hoping that they can see that and learn to have some respect. Far too often, I feel women see men as um, just good for what they can provide, who cares about what they feel or what they're going through. They have a thought process of what that man is in their mind, but they've never seen him because there's been father absence in the home. And then they've had their mother who's maybe rotated through so many different men and it showed them how they don't need them or how they can extract resources. I would hope women will want to change that. <laughs> I want to add to that. I, I often see women and my wife's circle and different circles of women, right? They use this social media as uh, one of these tools to validate why they're right. So, and, and why you're wrong in, in the sense of, you know, this is common. Most, most, all women think this way or all men would do this. And I think society has painted this picture that a man's supposed to have chivalry and do all these different things. And when you don't, you're wrong. You're not worthy to be praised no more. You drop the ball in one area, finances, uh, not being emotionally engaged or emotionally connecting. And just because of that one thing that you're working on as a man and developing, this gives her a right to turn her back towards you, right? And, and that's one of the things I, I hope we can address and start that dialogue because I think it's a, it's a important dialogue that needs to be had uh, out there in the world. Especially so in a relationship, right? If you're going to be married, you're going to be in a relationship, you're dating someone. If you come into that as if you're perfect and you make no mistakes, but you watch down on the other person and tell them all the mistakes, 
that's not a relationship. That's slavery. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Right. Be willing to come to the table knowing that you're not perfect. I think the greatest thing that I can say for myself going through this growth process is I never really knew my value and still I'm working on it daily. Right. That's an affirmation right. of mine. Right. 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 I'm constantly working to be the person that I need and want to be daily uh, and, and how I see it. I have a traditional mindset, but I do understand that there's a modern world outside of that traditionalist. So it's how do we live in that world, man? What do we do? How do we figure that out? And how do we communicate to women in a world where you can say the truth to them and it can be taken on how they felt you said right. what you said and how it made them feel and not deal with the real issue. Mm -hmm. And so I'm hoping in Men Talk, we'll bring women in, they can give us their point of view and it can be a place that's open, that where there's some respect there, differences are welcome. But more importantly, we hope to get to a place where we can get some type of balance. I'm so afraid of the future 10, 15 year now. You have children, right. young girls. Yeah. I'm just so afraid for them in the, with the statistics that are out there. I mean, by 2030, 50% of women will be single. Like that's, that's tough. Mm -hmm. You know, um, 50 women over 45 are on the most depressed on the most anti-depression medication. Mm -hmm. Feminism has just lied to us and it has integrated and destroyed the American family. And if we as a nation want to stay strong, we have to pick up the American family because without two people working together, showing kids with the emotional growth patterns, things that they need, we're in for a doomsday. Because really right now, our girls, they only want to receive they only want to get, they never are wrong. We always telling them that they're beautiful and they're perfect and they can make no mistakes and rightfully so as they've gained their value into coming into the world. Us men, we're learning our value. We're having to earn it and really slave over that. And so as we do that though, two men, there's areas we can grow in yeah. and, um, and, and hopefully we can get to that point. But I don't want to drown out this channel where it's about all of what the man is doing. There's some things that women are doing and practicing in relationships that I see on social media, not being able to go to freaking, um, what is that place, the um, cheesecake factory it is? Yeah. Uh -huh. Like you can't take a woman on a date to a cheesecake factory or the gold digger shows where you're trying to talk to the girl <laughs> and she says no, but you go get in a Lamborghini and she changes her mind. Right, Those right. are moral and characteristic things that I think we can, can, we can mm. control that are started yeah. from in the home. What do you think? Right. Right. No, I would agree with you. I definitely would agree. There's a lot of uh, materialistic women out there that's been developed. I worry about that a lot with my children, um, understanding that if you're looking at TV, if you're out in the marketplace, that's what you're seeing. That's what my kids is hearing. So, you know, I, I try to limit them from social media and all these different things for I can develop their them, especially my girls, right? They'll develop them as a young ladies and understanding their value. And the value is not by what someone can do for you or what you have, but what you are able to build with inside yourself. And I and I see that also on the flip side with men, right? We have been so accustomed to having to provide, not saying we, we do do that, but taking a woman out on a date and you gotta get the bill or if you're gonna be labeled as such and such, right? Uh, and doing all these other little things to cater to the need or the stereotype or the, the popular um, stance of a woman. And I think that needs to change. I think the courting process is where we fell. That's, I think that's the original place where it should start. The way we court women is just bad. And the way that women court men is bad. You can have a, a great value man, because all men have value, right? But you're unable to see that because he wasn't able to take you to a nice restaurant. Or he doesn't drive a, a Mercedes or he doesn't dress that well, or he's not making six figures. Or the silliest thing I hear so much is, he's not six feet tall. <laughs> like, wow. come on. Like, these 1% guys that 
every woman that's below a five in the rating scale believes she deserves this person but haven't put any work or time into herself, investing in herself to attract that type of man. And that's where I, this is why I can understand in 2030, so many people are gonna be with, by themselves alone. Because this, this mindset that is turning to a belief, that's what we're losing right now. We're, we're losing our morals, we're using our values, because of all these different platforms and different things that's going on, it's saying one thing and we're losing sight of the real thing, which is every individual needs to work on themselves, right? That's the task of everyone. You, you st your parents do that at a young age, you get to adulthood and you're supposed to continue that. Uh, what I believe a marriage is, right? Um, a, a man takes a woman, he takes her away from the father and he continues the work that the father has begun. But right now we have women that's not willing to even follow men. So this is the scenario. I take away this woman from her father and I'm noticing the areas of weakness or areas that just could be improved on. And I try to put plans together to, to work on her and build her up because she is a representation of me. But because I told her that she needs to be better in this specific area, that caused her to feel a certain type of way towards me. Now it's, I need to point out every flaw that you have. And it becomes mm. this game or this, this relationship where it's always tick for tack. And then a man gets so fed up that he realized he don't want to be in this simulation no more. So he steps out of it. And this is when she comes in from what I have noticed and takes over. And every conversation, genuine conversation to, to help the, the union progress is an opportunity for her to step on you. And that's had to stop. That's what we need to address. That's what needs to change in order for us to have hope for your children, my children, and our world as a whole. I agree 100%. Uh, dating isn't the same as it has been before. So I would always say men should take that break and get right. some therapy. <laughs> You know, Kevin Samuel said it best is, hey, ma'am, get in some therapy, ma'am. Have you been in therapy? <laughs> when have you started? You know, women call therapy, breaking up with them and go talking to their friend over how horrible this guy was. And then they're into the online, getting all of the DMs, of the men that are, they can reach through there. And so, um, you know, I'm with you. Uh, men talk for me. I'm hoping that as we bring more and more people into this community, we'll get a belief and we'll get a community of people who are gonna tell you the truth. Right. right. And we not sit back and placate much longer. That we stand up for ourselves in a relationship. I mean, I, I think you would agree that you go in and you take far too much sometimes and where you wanna stand up for yourself, but is it worth it? Right, right. right. And, and we need to get past that as right. men. You have value and needs just as well as a woman does. And I think with feminism, which I believe was a big lie in regards to right. breaking the family and how you would attack it, they went in and gave women so many multiple options. Of mm -hmm. course, they're going to pick one other than A, being with your husband, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I can be B, take them because I'm unhappy. Mm -hmm. Three, I can go out and find the next man who can take care of me and get his money right. as well. And so it's just the system is on what you can take, not right. what you can give. Right. And so we really lost that. Um, the ability to do that. I'm hoping that um, we can come in and start having men check in. Even with men, um, I know in this space it's not normal for men to come in and be vulnerable and to be emotionally um, mature, right. Right? right? We're highly sexual human beings, men are. Um, women are highly emotional human beings. So I think it's on us to be a little responsible to learn some emotional maturity to be able to match that in the relationship for a human being we're encountering who is highly emotional. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and vice versa, right? right? When you're getting in a relationship, you know, and I, I like to touch on this because I think a lot of marriages end because of finances and because it's sexless and there's been some form of cheating. And um, I don't know how you've dealt with it, but I've gone through the relationship and have lost one in 14 years. And there was times where there wasn't a lot of sex and it wasn't maybe in what I wanted. It always had to be 
um, what she needed and her needs needed to be met and me making her happy. And I felt like I was running on this hamster wheel mm -hmm. to make her happy in the, sen in the same time losing myself. Right. And, uh, and I'm hoping and I would have loved a space to sit here and go, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. freaking divorcing myself from everything that I want and need just to please this woman and had someone come and tell me the truth or what we would deem as checking in or uh, sitting down and um, taking a knee, right? Yeah. Taking a <laughs> knee to right. say, hey, there's a storm going on around me and things are not where I need them to be. But hopefully I can find another man that would be willing to listen and hear without judging mm -hmm. and without saving this information and using it when it's appropriate later on but uh, really give me some valuable information on how to move forward in a mature way, right? Because I think, you know, there's uh, the old school way mm -hmm. and then there's a new school way, right? Mm -hmm. I, you know, I think the new school way is they'll just ghost you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, yeah. You'll be talking to yeah. them and 10 minutes later, you'll never get a, a message back again. Yeah. Right. Hey, Greg, you, you brought up something that kind of stuck out to me. You mentioned taking a knee. What was, how, can you explain that for everyone? Well. If you ever been in a storm, you know, I've worked as an electrical lineman, man, climbing the poles to, you know, work on power lines. And in, in a hurricane, those winds can get to 100, you know, 115 miles an hour, depending on how strong it is. I was actually on one in the East Coast and um, the power line had fell off at the top of the pole. Pole's about yeah. 60 feet tall up in the air. I had to climb up the pole with this line on my hand to get people back power in their homes and in their community to get it back into the pen so you had to climb up on it so um, what i always would say is in that storm in the wind when you're climbing it's hard to kind of get it you're you're, you're exhausted because it's fighting against you so um, we use a term hey man when i get done i gotta take a knee in this storm because the storm is too much and if we use it as an analogy in a real world um, there's things mounting on all of us men that we're dealing with constantly daily and that we have running through our minds that we don't get out and it's so unhealthy to hold it inside and never deal with it because it attacks different things on there so i always say why don't you just take a knee in the storm where you go in and say this is kicking my butt I need to sit down and reach out to someone else, mm -hmm. maybe like yourself, bro, mm -hmm. and I can come and tell you, hey, man, this is kicking my butt, mm -hmm. and I don't really know how to handle mm -hmm. it or what to yeah. do with it, yeah. and we can have yeah. some conversation. Yeah. I, I, I want to share a, a situation, an event that happened with me and my wife, right? Uh, the event goes a little like this. Uh, me and my wife, we was going back and forth in dialogue, and the conversation became a little bit intense and heated. Um, and it was just two opposite opinions, right? And it, it turned into labeling name calling, right? Because I'm on this side of the fence and she's on this side of the fence. And I, I seen where it was going. So I decided to take a knee. But in the process of me taking a, a knee, it was like hell was released on me because I became a coward. I became a... a of someone that's not willing to, to finish, so you're just gonna walk off and quit and all, all these different things. Mm. But is it worth it? If it's worth it enduring ridicule, enduring name calling, things that's gonna pierce your heart from someone you love, just for the fact that you love her, and sit and engage in a conversation that's not gonna go nowhere. Or is it better to take the knee, say, hey, Sometimes it's say simply, you won. It's fine. I take the knee, let me walk off, let me regather myself. Or in a perfect world, it's say, hey, babe, you know, I see where this is going. We don't really have nothing good to say about this. Can we revisit it down the road later for the sake of our peace, our harmony, us still being able to connect? And I think I have seen from, from friends and peers far too long that men will stay in there and endure all the ridicule, endure all the name calling and all these different things for the sake of being labeled, if he was to leave, not a man. And man doesn't show emotions in these things. And I think it's, it's time for us to start having this conversation that we need to show emotion. We need to be able to 
understand what we're feeling. Now, maybe in that setting is not the time to show emotions, right? Maybe that's what the knee is for. But don't just take the knee and walk off. Take the knee, call your boy, call your friend, call your safety network, and now you engage. That same situation, right? I felt that I was unable to be heard. So I decided to write a letter to my wife. I wrote this letter and uh, the re reply I got was not what I wanted to get and not what I expected. I need to sit in this hurt. I need to sit here and not necessarily embrace it, but understand it, right? Because oftentimes I see myself and other men use, not, I wouldn't say use, but take that hurt and allow the hurt to have them doing something they normally wouldn't do. And I am learning that when I sit and embrace whatever emotions I'm feeling before reacting and being able to respond to whoever it may be, I can have a more accurate, effective, um, productive response that's gonna continue us moving forward. And I, I think that's something that I benefit from taking the knee. And that knee is so important and that's exactly what it does. It helps you to recalibrate, right? right. Right. But, you know, we're on a podcast and it's men talk. So right. I will go into that situation and say, hey, women, how about watching how you speak to your man? Absolutely. Watching how you deliver your messages to him. You can tell him that you're disappointed without saying I'm greatly disappointed. You can ask for things without being condescending, without using past issues or mistakes as a barometer of who you are. See. When you do something wrong and you are a person, those are two different things. You're not what you did, right? You're Absolutely. not a thief if you stole something. You're a person who elected to chose to take something that wasn't yours. Mm -hmm. And far too often, I believe women see you make a mistake, see you talk too much. And, oh, he's just, he talks too well. No, that's just a, a weakness. That's a strength mm -hmm. that is not fully developed. And um, I, I would really challenge women on that, right? To, to really take a step back and look at how you're dealing with them. You know, I, I've had that as well. They'll try to match you with the energy that comes from, you know, we both play sports. So right. they'll try to match you with this energy like we would go in before really going into battle. But then we lose the femininity in the communication. Right. And I think that's where feminism has really just hurt us, right? Yeah. Because yeah. Now they want to be equal and even and say they can do the exact same thing you can do. And then when they get in a relationship, they go, well, well you should lead. I'm tired of having it all on my back and I shouldn't. So it's like, do you want it or don't you want it? Right. Mm -hmm. you, you want shivery, but then you want to be independent. And so hopefully we can get these things out there that women are doing them first and foremost. Right. right. Like that. That's not OK that your wife will go in and that's the election that she chooses to speak to you in. Mm -hmm. Um, when in fact, the same respect that she wants, she should give. Right. It's far too often, I think, women are wanting to be treated a certain way, but they never want to be what and how they are treating Absolutely. or wanting to be treated. Right. Right. And that's the issue, man. If we can get to that, we probably can save and salvage relationships. The other thing would be women. It is not a man's job to make you happy. Absolutely. Or Absolutely. it is not a woman's job to make a man happy. Happiness derives within oneself. Mm -hmm. And it is projected into the relationship. We both should be independent of each other. Mm -hmm. But as we come together, we can be interdependent within the relationship. Right. And I think that's a healthy format. And even on this show, bringing on marriage and family counselors and therapists who can speak to these things and give us some of the statistics and data, I think will help educate listeners as well as get men a lot stronger to know that not only they are struggling, right. there's so many more. And maybe, just maybe, women, maybe that A word mm -hmm. that has two C's, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they'll, they'll take a little bit of accountability. Right. That right. maybe they right. haven't handled everything well. Maybe they fumbled the ball. And so maybe it shouldn't be a girl, he ain't all that good. Because then I would challenge men. If you're dealing with a woman 40 and over, 
And she hasn't had the ability. She had 40 years at it. She hasn't been able to obtain and keep a man. There's a real probability that she's far modern enough to where she can be independent or a boss babe. Yeah. And if we're dealing with independence and boss babes, if you see it in their Instagram models, if they're posting it online, independence feels so good. Men, please run. Run fast. <laughs> as fast as you can. Right, right, right. <laughs> So, so, in your opinion, what do you think us men can do when we're caught in these situations where we are so accustomed to placating to women? How One, we, we got to stop simping. <laughs> you know, we need to stop simping and really be able to, uh, if I'm going to be very, very honest, we're here talking, hey, man, you got to grow emotionally. You're never going to bond and connect with your woman if you can't grow emotionally. Mm -hmm. um, I was married 14 years. None of those years did I bond emotionally. Right, I didn't right. know. I had no right. skill. Never knew that I lacked in it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, it took for her to leave me and me to hit rock bottom with getting some help to help me to see my behaviors. Mm -hmm. Right. What I was bringing, how I was raised, how all those things from childhood into my adulthood all mirrored each other and that that little boy inside of me who was missing his mom or wanted to be loved or nurtured and and i was arrested in that development it was things that i did not get that i needed and i put women in charge of that and put it on them and they were strangers and right. so really getting some help to understand that i wasn't perfect was the greatest help Right. And what role does a woman play in that same scenario? I think a woman would be the same exact thing. And without a woman that goes in and sees that she's not perfect, the ability to not be perfect is the starter in a relationship. Because if you go into a relationship thinking that you're perfect, that puts the bar on them even higher. It doesn't allow them to be human. Mm -hmm. Everyone is not perfect. They may, I don't like eggs. You like eggs. Well, because you don't, we divorce. Right, right, right. Like, this is the world we live in. Mm -hmm. Freaking, you vote for Donald Trump. They will hate you, hang you. Mm -hmm. You know, let people have their opinions. Let them be who they are. Um, and a, admire people differences. Right, right. I would say that about women. Instead of mm -hmm. making men have to fall into this box, mm -hmm. six foot, six figures, six inches. Right. It, it's just ridiculous. And um, they're missing out on a lot of great people. And um, I think they're all going after the same man. And um, that man probably don't want women, you know, um, that yeah. woman particularly. Yeah. yeah. But they're all aiming for it. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? What would you want if, if you were in a perfect world and, you know, we're on a podcast. So what would you say to your wife? She's not here. Right. She's not listening. Right. What would you want her to know about what you're experiencing in this relationship? What I would want her to know. It's a good question. I would want her to know that I don't feel hurt. Um. And I would want her to know how to hear me. It's not responding and very similar to how men do with women. I don't need you to solve the problem. I need you to come alongside me and sit in it with me. If I'm going through something and I'm sharing that with you, sit there with me. Allow me to filter through these thoughts with you and you being able to love me up and say, Hey babe, it's all right. We'll get through this together. Or Hey babe, I can't relate. I don't really see it from this, from your perspective, but I'm here for you. Or what can I do to help you? That's what I would want. I would want my wife to understand that I am human. Uh, I don't have it all figured out, but I am working towards that, figuring it out. And she's not human, and she doesn't have it all figured out. What brings up this next point? So often, women f think they have it figured out. 
I don't know. I can't recall the last time I have asked my wife something and she didn't have the answer. Or we had a debate back and forth and she knew for sure the answer. Or better yet, I can talk to her about work and share what I'm doing and she can tell me how it's wrong the way I'm doing it. And she don't have a clue what I do. I find it so often that women think they know it better than men. Whatever it may be. When it comes to raising a boy, I feel like women think they can do it better than men. And that's silly. So to answer your question, the second thing I would say is being humble. I would want my wife to eat some humility pie and understand that she don't have it all figured out. And that's okay. We can figure this out together. You can work from there. <laughs> right, right, right. Right, I'm 100% with you. Uh, I think perfection in this world is something that we fixate on. Women, since they've been really young, we kind of coddled them alone. They're born beautiful. We kiss them and hug them and then they... <laughs> you bring up a good, uh, another thought to me. I, I'm talking about how women uh, always have the answer, right? And haven't figured it out. But they're the first one that denies themselves from being accountable. You know everything, but you can't be accountable to anything. In what world does this work? <laughs> well, it's working in this one right now. They are the lead in well, Is it really working, though? Well, no, it's not. I mean, 70% of divorces are led by women leaving. And um, I think I was reading the other day, there are more women who own homes in the world than men. Hmm. And the number one reason? I, I can guess. Which one? I would guess because it's from divorce. It wow. was passed on. Wow. <laughs> Wow, not to take anything from them, but wow, we are in that type of space, huh? Mm -hmm. um, but we can be better than that. Those things need to be changed. You know, women yeah. definitely have some flaws in how perfect they may feel that they are. Or my big pet peeve for men and women is that they want to move on to the next, but have never done any work on what went on in the yeah, current. Of the last, yeah. The current, and, um, right. and so it's just... Uh, something that we got to get past and I think in these men talk we can do it I feel men come in. Hey, bro. You're a little overweight, bro You mm -hmm. got to get better, you know, or what are you doing? I, mean, I probably don't want to be this way with your wife or you know Maybe let's take this or say hey, man, you know, it's not okay that your wife chooses to talk to you this way What is going on with you? Right. Why are you allowing the disrespect and the lack of um, accountability that you would have done to you Right. onto your partner because we placate and are afraid to deal with a woman when she's mad or angry and I find very often that women only really have an issue with you when you're bringing up something that they may not have done right right, right. and that's something I'm hoping we can even getting on these shows is you know really go into some of these women's past relationships yeah. and dissect what it is because some of it is women's choice them blindly not choosing or blindly choosing out of the wrong thing, right? Mm -hmm. Having the wrong intention. And um, then we're marrying people that way, mm -hmm. right? Um, hoping that we can get back to marrying our friend. Right. And creating a union that can stand past small mistakes. Right. The value of the relationship <laughs> is worth it than to kill the relationship over a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And... I just feel far too often women are quick to let that thing go. Mm -hmm. And men, I think we're equipped to fight to the tooth and nail to the end. So we take it harder than women. Yeah. And it sets in us. There's more lonely men, more men taking their lives. That's why we're here. It's not okay. It's okay to come in here and talk about it. Tell us how she did you, how she told you you were nothing and how she verbally abused you, which I think is another thing that we need to really work on with women. If there's a physical abuse, I think women highly qualified to uh, fit into the uh, verbal, verbal abuse, abuse Absolutely. Uh, category. And we need to change that, right? Verbal words are real. 
right? They don't want to hear they're fat. They don't want to hear, you know, that they lied, mm -hmm. but, but they'll tell you who you're not and yeah. what money you don't have or how short you are mm -hmm. or don't talk to them because you don't like your color, or your, your mm -hmm. hair, or your pants, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> We got to get deeper than where we've been in relationships and get back to creating solid families that love one another and support each other through mistakes, man. Mm -hmm. People make mistakes. They're not perfect. Mm -hmm. And if we get online thinking that we're perfect, no, you're going to look at my life and find out who I am and know that I've, I've failed at a lot of things. But I think failure is a good thing. I think failure sets you up for success because Absolutely. if you haven't failed, you haven't gotten a chance to yeah. learn and regroup. But if you just succeeded all the way, you really don't know what that struggle could be and, and, and feel like. And so I'm thinking far too often we have women who have just succeeded all their life. Now they get 40 and 50 and they still want to be on the side of succeeding. No, you're like a, a, a grape that is turning into a raisin. Right. And we got it. We can you still have value because we eat both. Right. Right. right, right. Just, but um, it's just understanding that you're not the same and we all are changing. Yeah. And um, what do you think on that? I agree. I agree with what you're saying. Um, as we change. Right. Doesn't necessarily means our value has to change towards one another. If anything, it should enhance, right? And, and I, I, how I see it so often, we're caught up in a place where one's partner, spouse, significant other is changing. And the, the category that is, they're listed under is we are falling out of love. Or he's no longer available for me. Or he's so different than what it was when we first got married or when we was dating. Study understanding and recognizing that if we're not changing, we're not living. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, men are forced to evaluate where they're at in life. And women don't have that luxury. And I say luxury because it is a good thing that we are evaluating ourselves. And women don't have the luxury, not by force, but by choice. Women are choosing not to evaluate themselves because they believe that they are 10. Regardless what state of life they're in. I was a 10 at 15, I'm a 10 at 22, and I'm a 10 at 42. I will always be a 10. I lost myself, I had five kids, I'm 300 pounds, but I'm still a 10. That has to change. That reality, that our delusion that women are walking in is also changing the landscape of what relationships are because a, a, a a great man can approach that woman and that woman can dog him out because she's in this delusion that she's more than what she is. Well, thanks for coming and being a part of Men Talk. This is the first session. Um, I want to thank everybody for watching. We ask yes. that you click like and support the channel. We're on Instagram, TikTok. We'll be pretty much on all platforms. Um, men, if you're out there and you want to reach us, we can go to mentalk911.com. Um, I think today was a great day, learning a little bit about introducting relationships and some of the expectations of men and women, what we're seeing in the common day world. And, and again, this is a safe place. I hope you felt that you were able to share Absolutely. and feel Absolutely. comfortable as well. Absolutely. Well, with that being said, this is our first show. We'll see you next time. We out. Men talk. Speak on it.